Hey guys, welcome back to The Lucy Show. Hope you guys are all doing well. Hey there, Mr. Fix-It. We're gonna talk about snails. And yes, I've been seeing this report for like a whole week now. I just really honestly did not click into it to read about the snails because they kind of scare me. This is like the most realistic version of Gary from SpongeBob, if you guys know what that is. The, the, blue, the blue periwinkle looking colored snail from SpongeBob. I honestly love Gary so much that if it looked like Gary, I mean, actually, if it was blue, it would be more scary. But if it looked like Gary, I would want it as a pet. I've honestly, out of every character from SpongeBob, Patrick would be cute. It would be cute. But I think I'd prefer having Gary as like my cat because I think it meows. Anyways, thank you so much for joining me on my live stream. Subscribe if you haven't already. This is my second channel, main channel link down below. Uh, smash that like button as always. And I hope you guys had an awesome awesome time during 4th of July weekend. Honestly, just there's still fireworks today. I don't know why, but it's like there's always that one family or like three families that decides they don't want to celebrate 4th of July when everybody is celebrating 4th of July on the 4th of July. They like to do it on the 5th. So I don't, I don't, I don't mind it. I don't mind it. Extra free fireworks to look at, but generally, yeah, this doesn't change. I feel like every year, unless we're like, in a depression because right now I guess people are saying we're in a recession but it's not really fully there yet till Q2 GDP comes out but sure um so I guess right now close enough to a recession we're still getting fireworks the day after 4th of July maybe the day that we're in a depression hopefully I don't have to live through it but most likely I will um yeah we probably won't hear fireworks on the 5th of July <laughs> But let me know what you guys thought. Was it like really busy in your neighborhoods, wherever you are, depending on what state you are in? Or was it just like super dead, super silent over the weekend? For me, it was still a lot, but definitely a lot less fireworks than the weeks before. Um, okay. This is a this is a liked tweet that I saw from Elon Musk's Twitter page that I wanted to share with you guys. I thought this was really cute. Uh, it's posted by Pranay Pathol, somebody that Elon Musk responds to a lot. He said, what really matters is we should learn from the historical events and try not to repeat them. So this meme is, oh, Panzer of the Lake, what is your wisdom? And the Panzer of the Lake says, stop trying to cancel historical events slash people just because they are moral according to today's standards, which by the way, a lot of things are moral anymore according to today's standards or even the 2000s or even the 1990s standards. A lot of things in the past are definitely not right. I mean, we literally burn people at the stake for, I don't know, believing that the earth was not flat. Uh, it says history was history must not be forgotten whether the act committed was good or bad there's always a valuable lesson to be learned the only way to prevent history from repeating itself is to be informed of the past and i think that's macro and micro at the same time like on an everyday basis or even through your own life if you can't examine your past and we're not allowed to like take pictures of the past if we're not allowed to make videos of our own past or write in your diaries like just everything's deleted and they want you to be actually that would be really weird i don't think that's been made into a movie before but imagine if there's a movie about you not allowing not al not being allowed by the government or wherever you live or whatever planet you're on to remember the past that would be pretty funny it's just like you're not allowed to keep any diaries you can't keep any images you just gotta wake up brand new as a different person every single day that would be actually quite interesting maybe it'll even be good i don't know but I definitely think that as of right now, I believe history is important macro and micro level because just as like a right, just as a person, not as a country or anything, but just as a person, you need to grow from your mistakes. Hopefully you don't have to have too many mistakes. You can read from books and learn from other people's mistakes. But again, that's where history plays a key role. So I, I honestly like I'm one of those people who hate seeing like historical figures, even if I don't know who they are, um, being pulled down in like other countries that I may not be living in. I'm just like, okay, it's kind of sad, even if you don't agree with everything that that specific individual throughout history did. But I mean, it took a lot of effort for people to put a statue up. <laughs> so unless the statue is like crazy offensive, like, I don't know if it said all blonde hair dying Asians should go to hell. <laughs> like, 
if it's not crazy, crazy offensive um, to the people of today, like like an actual sign. And most people who walk by it, if they like need to whip out their phones in order to like do their DD and then figure out what this historical figure is even famous for, I don't think it's necessary to be like pulling down figures. And also, even if they did something bad, it's another lesson to be learned that what they did should not be repeated. If we just wipe out everything from history, that's very unfortunate because then we don't, we're not like, we're not looking at our, our lives and like ourselves as like human beings, honestly, I think from like an honest lens, if you delete everything in the past, like pretend as if World War One, World War Two didn't happen and all of the massacres, all of the bad things that human beings did, it, it's unfortunately still what makes us human, but hopefully what will make us better humans in the future. But that's just my two cents. Let me know what you guys think. I'm gonna do a little poll. If you missed the poll, let me know in the comment section down below what you feel about that. I personally feel like we should always know about history. And as much as I didn't like history classes back in high school, I think it's very important to know to a good extent of all the bad things that has occurred. All the good and the bad, but let's be real here. There was a lot of bad things that happened throughout history. Um, or just a lot of things that are canceled nowadays, right? Like, sure, we have the proper age for people to get married, which I believe is over 18, right? You have to be over 18 in most countries, not all, not all, um, to be married and like have consent, all that. Uh, but obviously, Back in the medieval times, girls were getting pregnant and getting married and popping out babies and being grandmothers at like, I don't know, before the age of 18. So it's definitely, I think, important to know about the past and also not judge the past too much and feel like we have it all correct right now because I definitely don't think that human beings are like at this enlightened level where everything we're doing and everything that we make legal is necessarily so much better than the past per se um do you think history should some history how about that some history should be hidden because if you're one of those people that do believe in i don't know pulling down signs breaking historical st structures or buildings or i don't know marble structures of historical figures then you are one of those people that think that some history should be wiped out. Do you think some history should be wiped out? Yes or no? Just curious. There's no right or wrong answer. Um, Lucy, do you own XRP? Derek's asking. Yes, I've said it many times on the main channel live stream um, that I do have XRP and I have yet to sold, sell it. Sell it. Yeah, I've never sold my XRP. Fun fact. That is like literally one of the only cryptocurrencies I think I've never sold. I've also never sold my reserve rights tokens, but that's just because I totally failed and I never made any money off of it. And it's in the red. I'm actually in the green for XRP. I'm just choosing not to sell it because I'm waiting for my moonshot. I hope it goes to the moon whenever that moment will come. And hopefully they win the case with the SEC because I do not have a crystal ball. I don't know what will happen. Luke Student Travel, hey there. Um, the local government has no authority to unilaterally you know, take down the statues without some sort of voting. Oh, I could, yes. I'm not talking about the local government taking down statues. I'm talking about like, you know, when you hear on the news, I think that was happening a lot during like 2020 to 2022. It's just like, I see on the news that like people in Europe, people in the US or like, even Canada, I think, where people either like spray paint damage, um, like statues of like historical figures. I don't even know what half of those people are, by the way. Or, or they just like straight up take like a string, like a heavy rope, and then they just yank that down, which is also kind of impressive, but wrong at the same time. Because I don't agree with it, but damn, I did not know you could do that. Uh, I know how. Please bless by my mullen stock lucy what's mullen again luke can you tell us what does the company mullen do i don't think i've heard of it hey lucy is are your coins on a hardware wallet like nano niche media says no actually no 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 um i have i have wallets where i have the keys to it on my phone so i own a ledger nano wallet but as of right now i could tell you honestly i don't have any crypto in there i keep it 
with my wallets um, on my phone. So I have different wallets that I don't show you guys on the streams um, in my phone where I have the keys to. So it's not on an exchange. It's not a hot wallet. And I've moved most of my crypto off of hot wallets onto just my, what are you, is it, is it cold wallet? Cold wallet or hard wallet. No, it's not a hard, hard wallet. I forgot the term, but I have the keys to it. So it's not a hot wallet. I want to say it's cold wallet, but I forget if I'm saying that right. If I have the keys to it and it's just on my phone, because it's not a cold, hard wallet would be like Ledger Nano wallet, right? Am I saying that wrong? <laughs> Where do you use, uh, so your coins, are they on exchanges? Well, I just answer your question. They're not in exchanges. So for example, like your trust wallet or your Coinbase wallet, those are all examples of wallets where you hold the keys to. So it doesn't matter what happens to Binance or Coinbase. They don't have access to my crypto on there. So if I have Bitcoin on there, that's mine. Unless I forget my keys or um, somebody gets access to my keys, then I'm screwed. Smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you, Jeff. Yes, destroy it, folks. And I'm glad that at least 92% of you, which is a lot, agree with the fact that we should not wipe out on history. And as much as, you know, it hurts looking at history because there's lots of unpleasant things, I think, for everybody to be unhappy about or for certain cultures to be ashamed of on what they did to others. Um, definitely a ter lots of terrible things back in the day. And I think it's just kind of like, you know, when you hopefully if you've grown a lot throughout your life, I think it's as much as I hate um, cringe word, I don't even like the word, I really don't like the word cringe. It's like the word moist. Um, but there are, there are cringe worthy moments in people's lives. I personally have a lot, I think. And when I look back at my own past, I hate some moments that occurred, but it is also what makes me, me today. And I'm glad that I feel disgusted, uncomfortable with my past at certain points because I feel like I've grown as a person to either no longer have as terrible of thoughts as I once did or have done as many terrible things now that I have in the past because I learned from how unhappy I was when bad things happened in the past um, either to me or because I was directly involved. So I definitely feel better or more grown up and like I've evolved in comparison to my history, even though I don't like my history all that much. The similar propaganda has been carried out in many developed nations, including Japan, where I am from, Aikuyas. Oh, okay, your name is very Japanese. Um, Japan's still not taking tourists, huh? Because the last that I saw in the news was that Japan was taking in tourists, but only if you go with like, a tour group, which I don't really want to. So I think like only if I pay for like a, a tour group maybe like from the US to Japan, then they'll accept me. So I still really haven't gone. Jeff Pruden says, stickers. Um, do you want to see one of my cute stickers? I guess this is fitting for 4th of July or the 5th of July. <laughs> for those of you that smash that like button, um, I wish you all the luck with your portfolios. Hope it's better than anybody trading on WSB. All right, on to the snail thing. And then we'll talk a little more about Grey's Anatomy. Anyone in here even watch Grey's Anatomy? I know it's so old, but I cannot believe I did not watch Grey's Anatomy. Like the first episode I've ever watched was like three days ago. And I've just been obsessed. I'm nonstop watching Grey's Anatomy. I already finished season one. I'm on season two. I'm do not ruin it for me because I don't know what goes down at all. So don't tell me who ends up with who or who dies because I feel like there's too many main characters right now for everybody to survive on a hospital show. So for you guys that don't know what Grey's Anatomy is, it's like, I guess the easiest way is to say it's like a doctor fictional television series that went on. It's still going, which is so crazy because I guess it started in 2005 and it's 2022. So it's been running for 17 years. <laughs> these characters and I think the lady who plays Meredith which if you're not a Taylor Swift fan, Swift fan then you don't know this but I'm a Taylor Swift fan and one of my friends who's a bigger Taylor Swift fan than I am she told me that Taylor this is just a fun fact um not like it's gonna be useful to you but she told me that Taylor Swift's cats she has a bunch of cats but one of her cats name is Meredith and Meredith the Meredith that is Taylor Swift's cat 
was named after the Grey's Anatomy's main character lady who's played by Ellen Pompeo. I hope I'm saying her last name right. Um, but Ellen P. She plays Meredith, who is the main character on Grey's Anatomy, and I love her. And I think it's really, again, maybe just a coincidence, but I actually watch old school. I watch old school like I guess three days ago or whatever on Netflix, it just popped up as like my recommended. And I was like, oh, okay. Like Will, Fer Will Ferrell's in here. <laughs> Can't be that bad. Um, since I just recently watched the Anchorman and I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, but I'd never seen old school before I watched it. And then like, I guess Ellen Pompeo, who's the main character in Grey's Anatomy was on old school first. And then she got the role in Grey's Anatomy. And i and I was just like, whoa, I, I didn't expect to, because I literally on the same day after watching Old School, when I finished it, I thought I was so hilarious, by the way. I feel like people just don't make movies like that anymore. I wish people would just make movies like the 2000s, but I think we're all just too politically correct now. Um, but two, then 2005, she got the role, I guess, for um, Grey's Anatomy and just such a fitting character. Uh, airdrop news coming soon. Watch One Piece running from 1990 plus MD says. Wait, wait, wait. Is it, I know One Piece is like a Japanese anime. Is it, is it still running? I've never watched it. I have a friend who loves it. Um, I know One Piece is the guy who's like, is he stretchy or whatever? And he has a hat. I've gone to like those, what do you call it? Anime centers or you buy like cards and little figurines I think it looks cute but I don't I don't know what the storyline is it sounds like a lot of time um I actually this is kind of sad but I wasn't ever really planning on watching Grey's Anatomy even though I've heard great things about it I was just never planning on watching it because I felt like it would make me sad to see, because I know it was about like hospitals. So I'm like, oh, maybe it'll make me sad seeing people dying and getting sick and whatnot. So I just like kind of always decided I didn't really want to watch it. Um, but recently, somebody close to me had this health scare. And I mean, it's it's not had. They, they do, they're in this situation. And I just felt very like stressed out and a little lost. And I feel like I just don't know a lot about the anatomy. Like I'm one of those people that like, I know my heart is here, <laughs> but I'm not very good with all the other parts of my body and like all the names and medical terms. Like I'm so horrible at it. I just wanted to know more. And I'm, I honestly just pick up things better when I watch, watch it in a video format or like through Netflix or a TV show. So I just, I think I was just so stressed out and like couldn't really deal with just someone close to me, you know, being unhealthy and then having to go to the hospital very soon. So I just decided to like watch Grey's Anatomy and prepare myself, learn more terms and stuff. Um, and yeah, then I just fell in love with it. It's so good. It's so, so good. If you've never watched it, it is quite old because like I said, it's from like 2005. But when you watch it, aside from like you looking at their pagers and their phones that are not iPhones, um, it really just, it feels like it's timeless. Like it just, it feels like this show could be running today and you really wouldn't be able to tell like major differences, I guess, except when they like, say stuff like I found it on the internet kind of thing. Cause it's as like the internet is still kind of new back then. Um, but yeah, I highly, highly recommend it. It is honestly like sit on the edge of your seat. I'm like so addicted. I watched it till like 4am in the morning last night. And when I'm done with you guys, you bet that's what I will be doing. Just, um, watching more of it. Season two is where I'm on. Just so good. The storyline, it's like, you don't have to be interested in like doctors and hospital, but I think it would be a plus if you like want to learn those medical terms, which I do. Um, but even if you have like no care in the world for like learning medical terms or like knowing more about like doctors and stuff like that, uh, it's still like such an interesting plot. And there's like, it's about family, relationships, jobs, careers. It's just like a really, really good, interesting, on the edge storyline. Then there's so many like 
a lot of character development in it that I think is really smooth transition and it's good. Don't feel bad. I'm on season one of Game of Thrones. What? Chill chillity. I, okay, well, I know how you feel on Game of Thrones because I watched Game of Thrones late. I watched it like right before the last season. Um, yeah, funny you mentioned Game of Thrones. I was just talking about it yesterday um, with a friend and she was saying how like she watched Game of Thrones from the beginning like so it was like a decade long process they just like you wait for every time there's a new episode and I felt well she told me that people are more disappointed when you waited so long all these years like all these years of your life you waited for the ending and then a lot of people weren't happy with the ending but I think it's because I did not watch Game of Thrones like I did not spend 10 years of my life you know waiting every week or whatever to see a new episode I just kind of binged it all at once up until like, I don't know, season seven or something right before the last season. So it just seemed like really quick for me. It was like within a year. And I was like, great. I like the ending. I mean, do I think the ending could have been better? Not going to ruin it for you. The person that I didn't want to die died. So I wasn't too happy with the ending, but it wasn't like I felt like I was cheated. Um, paper wallet is also cold wallet, MD says. Oh, okay. Okay. Exchange is not hot wallet. Desktop or mobile or browser wallet is hot wallet and ledger is cold wallet. Paper wallet is also cold wallet. Oh, I've always called exchange as hot wallets. I don't know what else you would call them then because technically you can. It is like a wallet because you can do transfers and stuff. So crypto wallet, technically what Robinhood is calling themselves is a crypto wallet because you can make transfers. So usually I still call anything that the exchange where you don't hold the keys to, I usually just call it a hot wallet. And then cold, hard wallet is, I just call it nano, nano ledger. But the mobile wallets like Trust Wallet and Coinbase Wallet, I don't know the correct term to call it, but it is definitely different from what I had on Gemini and Voyager because there is no locking me out of my trust wallet or my Coinbase wallet where I hold the keys to and can just gain access somewhere else. The similar problem, and the, okay, wait, hold on, read that. Yeah, on 1000 plus episode and we'll keep going on for five plus years more, maybe MD says, oh, okay, <laughs> I think, I don't know when, um, what's it called? Grey's Anatomy is going to be over either, but I hope it never ends. Wait, three-eyed fish next super crazy, Jeff says. There's a three-eyed fish. Derek says, Lucy, have you have you watched Better Call Saul? No, I haven't. Are you, are you talking about like the Better Call Saul? I, I think I looked it up on Netflix, um, but that was, I think it's a spin. Is it like a spinoff of... Breaking Bad. I've never watched Breaking Bad, guys. I know it's embarrassing. I, I know, I know. Strange. Okay, here are the here are the series that I know are really supposedly good, and I've never watched it. Just didn't invest the time. But Ozark, I know, is supposed to be really good. It's on Netflix. Stranger Things, also on Netflix. Never watched it. And Breaking Bad, which I feel like if I had to start one of the three. It's like going to be between Stranger, Stranger Things or Breaking Bad. I've watched actually a few episodes of Ozark. I do see like the appeal of it, but I'd rather watch Breaking Bad or Stranger Things, which I know what Breaking Bad is about. I don't know what Stranger Things is about at all, but somebody mentioned it. I don't think they're here on my main channel about Stranger Things. And I just wanted to point out the fact that there's this song called Running Up That Hill that you probably have heard like through Reels and TikTok because TikTok made it crazy popular. Well, really, it was Netflix. I guess they featured this really old song by some lady. I don't know her name, but it's called Running Up That Hill. Even like the song itself, you can hear it. It's like it sounds super old. Um, so this song, I guess, was made viral through Netflix and then everybody kept like playing it as their background sound for like reels on Instagram and like short videos on TikTok. So apparently I saw on the news that the lady, she owns like, I guess the masters to her work. So she has like 80% of the money, the royalties going to her. So she made like millions of dollars recently, just in like, I guess the past month. 
because Netflix Stranger Things played that song and it just blew up and made her so much money. So it's kind of wild. I feel like TikTok and like, well, not so much reels on Instagram, but more so like TikTok. It just makes things so viral that it could literally give artists who maybe like retired or made a really hit massive hit song, but hasn't really been making money lately. It gives them the opportunity to get like a jackpot moment. It just depends on if TikTok wants to make you go viral. It's very crazy stuff. And who knows, like maybe some of you guys made a video um, now on TikTok that might not be picked up, but if a celebrity picks up your audio or your video, you could also just blow up, I don't know, 10 years from now or whatever. <laughs> Hello, I hope everyone had a safe, and hi there, Henry, safe Independence Day and still have their fingers intact. Ooh, I know, I, I gotta say, I, I actually, my uncle, when I was younger, my uncle, and I want to say my uncle and my dad, but like my uncle hurt his hand. He didn't blow up a finger or whatever, but like he definitely hurt his hand. I remember just like slightly that it was kind of, wrapped up and bandaged. He's fine. Um, but I remember it's because he lit a firework, the ones that are supposed to go up like really high and it didn't go off. So he gets closer to it, I think to light again. And it's always that type of accident where somebody lights it and they're like, Oh, it's not going off. Gets closer, tries to light it again. And then boom, if you're lucky, your head is intact. Um, so I think he just like hurt his hand from getting close to it, trying to light it again. And ever since then, and hearing stories of people getting their fingers blown off, I'm like, no, thank you. I would never light any fireworks unless it's just like the, I don't know what those ones are called, but like the sparklers, I guess. I, I'll deal with sparklers. That's about it. No massive fireworks for me. I read the Korean show All of Us Are Dead season two should come out late 2023, early 2024 Netflix. Oh my gosh. So many Korean shows. Uh, I mean, I'm excited for Squid Game 2, but actually no. I think I'm more excited for Squid Game, like the real, the reality show where they're going up against each other for like is it $4 million or something, right? Like $4 million, I think. Um, I think that would be interesting, more so than I am excited about Squid Game 2. I'm still waiting for Alice in Borderland. That still didn't happen yet. I heard about the Highland when my friends lives near there and some cousins too. Yeah, both parents. I know. Guys, it just doesn't stop, which is so depressing. Just like every time I turn on the news, I it's like I know it. You know, it's like you, you know already without even seeing any news that you're going to, you're going to flip towards some very unfortunate news. And again, it's just, it's just, and it's like, why is it always the young ones? It's always the ones like the, the, the people who are causing these, they just seem to be, I don't know if that's just what is chosen to be featured in the news, but it's really making the younger generation look really stupid and bad right now. It's constantly like somebody who's a teenager getting their hands on weapons and just causing massacre. It's like, what is wrong with you? I seriously wonder what, like, what is the real way to end it? Like, I think this is definitely, obviously not just a weapon issue, but like a brain problem. I think this is like a serious mental state, like a really, really bad, unhealthy lifestyle within the society of like the younger generation because there has to be some type of a connection there that you're always seeing news of teenagers younger people doing these things and it's like you don't hear stories of like a 95 year old going out there to like destroy everybody's lives so i think is there just a lacking of like I don't know, humanity, understanding, like compassion. I don't know what is missing out there, but there's something missing. School, today's education, life means something to some of them. I don't know. I really, I'm a lot of loss for words when I try to think about this stuff, but I definitely think there is a huge gap between the mind of not even just like life experiences, but maybe they just didn't experience enough hardships to feel lucky to be alive like I, I just think that 90 year olds you can argue okay maybe they don't have the energy to conduct these mad bad crimes but I don't think that's what it is I think if you if they just 
if the 18 year olds, the teenagers and the 20 somethings that are the criminals that you've seen recently, if they lived long enough to 80s and 90s, and I think there would be more understanding of like how how painful it is to be human because it is pretty painful to be human without having to go through even these massacres, right? Like there's people with cancer, there's people who are born with a disease or can't have babies and just tons of abilities that everybody, most people have in life. If you're born with a disability, you're not able to enjoy. There's a lot of sad things in life already naturally, not to mention natural disasters that make life really hard. And it's just, I don't think the people out there who are causing the pain really understand how lucky they are to just be alive and have their arms and legs and be able to walk around and do things. Uh, Nanny State, they there are over 8 billion humans now, Luke's food and travel, and um, yeah, only growing. But Elon Musk says there's not enough people out there. Uh, Jeff Pruden, uh, none, wait, none has, none, <laughs> Doge listed on FTX Japan, Niche Media says, are you in Japan too, Niche Media? So iCurious and Niche Media, are you both in Japan? Are there more people from Japan on my streams? I feel so happy. I, I want to go to Japan so badly. Um, I didn't even know that FTX was in Japan. Good job, Sam Bankman fried but that's good to know. FTX obviously has Dogecoin in the US, so that's why I still have some of my Dogecoins over there, earning me 5 to 8% APY. I don't know if Japan offers that, though, because the FTX US one that I have, link down below if you don't already have it, is offering the 5 to 8% APY. All right, let me read you guys. Well, actually, let me read for myself this whole snail situation. Um, and then I'm going to peace out and go watch my Grey's Anatomy because I'm addicted. Uh, a Florida country, sorry, a Florida county is quarantining after discovery of invasive giant African land snail. And this isn't even as big as the, this is like on somebody's hand, but there's another image that's like even bigger. It's literally, it looks like it's like, it's like this big. Or maybe the picture looks like it's that big. I need to see it in person. But it's both like scary and cute at the same time because I don't want to like touch a snail on my bare hands, but I think they're cute. I think they're 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 slimy, but they're cute. Okay, let me let me read it. Um, so this is a New York post that I'm reading on my computer. Florida County under quarantine. The, pol the people of Pasco County, Florida, have been subjected to the dreaded Q word again, quarantine, following the discovery of a giant snail that can harm humans, wildlife, and even houses. Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services confirmed the detection of giant African land snail in the Newport Ritchie, Ritchie area of Pasco County on July 3rd. The giant African land snail can grow to be around the size of a human fist. Okay, so I guess I was wrong by saying it's this big, unless your fist is this big. <laughs> I guess it could be this big. That doesn't even look that scary. I mean, of course, it's bigger than a normal snail, but that's not that big. It says that the giant African land snail can grow to around to be around the size of a human fist and has eradicated twice in Florida in the last 50 years. The snails pose a serious threat to humans by carrying the parasite rat lungworm. Ew, that sounds horrible. Rat lungworm, which can cause meningitis. They also feed off 500 different types of plants and the stuckle on homes. Jesus. I mean, I don't know. It doesn't say here. Let me see if they tell you how you can get the parasite rat lungworm from the snails. Like, I wonder if the snail has to be like touching a wound on your hand or does it just have to touch your hand and like, I don't know, secrete on your hand and then therefore you get the meningitis. I don't know how that works. Um, do your own DD, uh, not health advice, folks. Christina Chitty, a public information director at FDACS, told CNN that the African snail in Pasco County likely originated from the illegal pet trade. Although giant African land snails are illegal to own as pets in the United States, some exotic pet owners still keep illegally. The snails can lay 2,500 eggs per year. Oh, 
uh, making it hard to eradicate them. Jesus Christ. That must have been, I bet, I bet, I mean, to get here illegally, um, I feel like somebody must have, or maybe lots of people must have had them as pets. Uh, and then they just probably continue to populate with their 2,500 eggs a year. And this eventually happened. That's uh, really intense. I mean, people like what they like, man. It's kind of sad that they can't keep them as pets. But now we understand why. I wonder if the people who kept them understood the dangers of meningitis. Or like, do you just, are you supposed, or did they take like a meningitis shot and protect themselves, but then they didn't really protect other people who could come in contact. That's Gary from SpongeBob Children Chility says, yes, my first thoughts. Um, did you cover the snails to eat or invasive? Henry says, so we're covering the snails now, but I don't know much about it. So let's see. They act out or they commit. Yes, Henry. Again, terrible, terrible people doing these things. And I think they're just they lack, they lack enough understanding with the world and themselves in it and how important that they are and can be instead of wasting away their lives. And I think they just, again, don't feel for other people yet. I, I've read somewhere, and again, it's not health advice, do your own DD, but I read somewhere about the brain needing to develop fully like there's different things in your brain that like literally scientifically not fully developed until like i want to say for either female or male or maybe both together around the age of 25 so there's something like in your brain supposedly that doesn't develop fully until like past the age of 20 something so you can search that yourselves but i've heard about that so i don't know if maybe that's the missing piece not like there's no bad people at the age 30 plus and stuff. But yeah, I definitely think that there has to be a connection with all these young people doing these bad things lately. Or maybe it's like a copycat. There's like so many factors. It could be that they're seeing other young people do these crazy, wild, bad things. And then therefore, they're also doing it just like, I don't know, the teenage boys apparently that dressed up in suits to go to the Rise of Gru Minions movie this weekend and then apparently getting kicked out. I saw that on the news. I don't know if you guys saw it, but it's something about like theaters and the US being like kicking out teenage boys that they see like showing up in suits to watch the Minion movie because apparently they're like really rowdy. So the theaters are like trying to kick out people. That's what I read. Um, have fun being most people off the line. Henry 2022 Subaru, what? Do I know about cars, Luke, investing or working on them? I like cars but cannot fix one unless it's on empty. The worst is treading on a snail with your bare foot. Ugh. Okay, hold on. Let me read more about the snail thing because I'm really curious. Like, how does one get meningitis? Like, what are people doing to get this? Um, FDAC's Division of Plant Industry has begun to survey the area and will begin treatment, which consists of spraying a snail bait called metal dehyde base mullicide. That's intense. I'm not pronouncing that right. Quarantine began on June 25th, according to CNN, and it prevents residents from moving the snail or related items like plants and soil in or out of the designated quarantine area. Oh God. So like maybe like any plants or soil that the snail has touched, but that's like hard for somebody to know. So if you like touch a plant and if, if the snail like touched it, maybe you still be able to get, I'm assuming, meningitis or something. The first detection of the snail was in 1969, and it was eradicated in 1975. In 2011, the pests were found again and weren't eradicated until 2021. Ooh, that's pretty bad. It takes like 10 years. So 1969 all the way till 1975, then 2011 took 10 years to be eradicated till 2021. But the fact that it came right back from 2021 now in 2022 is pretty sad. It's like, hasn't even been two years since they've eradicated and it's already back. That's, that's, that's really sad. I bet there were like some hidden eggs somewhere that maybe they didn't see. And it just, again, blew up. Um, that's it. That was from the article. I don't know how, let me Google, like, how does one, how, hold on. And then I'm going to go and watch my show how does smash the like button by the way if you have not already how does 
African snail snails what are the questions on here people ask reproduce how do African snails eat what do African snail eggs look like? Ooh, I don't even want to see this. How does African snails pass on disease? Is that a question that can be answered? Each snail can contaminate the water that people work, swim, or wash in with many parasites. So movement of just one snail to a new area could introduce a disease in a previously healthy population. The study found that the way humans manage the land and waterways that snails traverse could be enabling their spread. How do African snails transmit diseases? Giant African land snails and disease. Although non-poisonous giant African land snails are capable of transmitting some diseases to humans, these snails can become carriers of angiostronagulus cantonesis, a parasite worm, if a snail eats droppings from a rat that also carries the disease. Oh, that's why it's called rat lung worm, maybe. It says if, if the snail eats poop from a rat that also carries a disease. I mean, what a coincidence. Why would a snail just go and eat a rat's poop? <laughs> Unless they wanted to. But still, I don't get it. I don't know if people, like what people are doing in order to get this disease, but I would just stay the heck away. Is snail slime harmful to humans? It has been shown that slug slime may carry a very small number of parasites in comparison with the body of the slug itself. Ingestion of a few parasites could possibly cause an infection, but it would probably be relatively mild. There are no studies that support an infection could be caused by skin contact. Again, do your own DD. This is just off of Google. Um, not even clicking into any links. This is just like right when you search about African snails and diseases. But again, it seems pretty scary because it does, that slime could be everywhere and it could still have parasites, even if it doesn't, even if your hand doesn't have cuts, it could still probably pass through you, which is kind of scary. It's funny though. I've actually, I've actually like, somebody gave me a snail serum from like Thailand. Like I've, I've put snails, now I don't want to anymore, <laughs> but I've actually had snail lotion. It's like a snail serum lotion. It's considered like, like, like a good product. I've actually had it for a while. Um, well, I used it for like a year and I just like, put it on sometimes when you, when you press like on the product, it's like just this clear gel and I put it on my face and it says it has snail slime or like snail content in it. <laughs> Mr. Fix is like, that's gross. So it's supposed to be good for your skin. Like, no, you can search this up. I heard in France that they also have some type of a facial where I'm not sure if it's snail secretion. Actually, I think pretty sure it is, but there's like facials out there. I'm pretty positive it was in France, but I'm also pretty positive people in Asia do this. If I bought, well, I didn't buy it. It was a gift that was given to me. If I had a lotion that was made of like snail secretion. So I think lots of people do this where you have, you use, you extract like the slimy stuff and like use it as like a facial product or whatever. But obviously that's different from just taking a real snail. Uh, welcome back, beautiful and amazing human being. Smash that like. Thank you, Alan. I have no idea how the French consider snails a delicacy. Oh yeah. And not to mention they eat snails, but also so do a lot of other countries, not just the French. The French are more well known for their escargots. Um, I'll defend that though. I've been to France, so when in, when in Paris, I did eat, and I've had escargots like in the U.S. too. Um, so I don't love it, love it. Like I don't have a craving to eat escargot, but it was pretty delicious. Anything with garlic and butter, I feel like I could deal with. So with some wine and escargot, when in Paris, or I know that what the saying is when in Rome, <laughs> but I'm not against it. Um, Walmart has escargot seriously, Henry says. What? Really? I've never seen Walmart escargot. I didn't know they sold escargot at Walmart. <laughs> what? I don't think I want to buy 
I've never bought like packaged escargot. I didn't even know you could do that. I never bought snail to like cook on my own. I feel like if I knew how I, I, I could, but just again, no, no like desire to purposely go and eat it, but I'm not against it. Like I eat a bunch of weird stuff. Anyways, thank you guys so much for joining me on this live stream. I'm going to peace out and go watch my Grey's Anatomy. Um, hopefully I'll be able to finish by the end of this year since there's 15 years worth. I'm assuming more than 10 seasons. Uh, thanks guys. Take care. Let me know down in the comment section below or on the stream over here who your favorite character is. If you do watch Grey's Anatomy, I'm not going to give anything away because I don't want to ruin it for anybody who does want to watch it, but I'm obsessed. I think it's really educational too. Just like knowing more of this like hospital lingo, maybe like for some of you younger folks, there's no need. Um, I used to think I was invincible. Like I never have to go to the hospital. I still don't really go, but I think now that I am getting older, people around me, I'm hearing more and more stories of people just like being sick. And now it's more important to me to know more about these medical terms, which honestly is always helpful. Just in conversation with others as well that deal with things even if you personally don't have to deal with these medical terms if you're lucky smash like button on the way out and i will see you guys soon bye